Okay, so every, every question that I answer on YouTube is kind of context related, so they're not, it's not that everything I say is equally applicable to every situation, because I'm sometimes referring to an individual in a specific context, and so it can be taken out of context. But generally I'd say, like, if someone's suffering from extremely heavy depression and heavy emotions in general, uh, but there can be exceptions to what I'm saying, and there's a family member who's really like irritates you on a regular basis. I mean, I often say to um, do as much processing as possible without trying to engage that person uh, as much and to try and refrain unless it's critical to have communications. And if it's not critical, do more processing. Uh, I only say that because coming from um, an addiction background, the idea with, uh, that you learn in addiction and 12-step fellowships is that if you've got like an itch, like if I, if I want a donut, or if I want to gamble, or if, I, if, I, if, there's, if I'm feeling a lot of heavy emotions and there's one person in the, in the world, if only they would behave the way I want them to behave, if only I could tell them how to behave and get them to do it, then I'll be happy. Uh, so, uh, and you've got a lot of heavy emotions, Generally speaking, for your well-being, um, your, your ego will always tell you, like, confront them as regularly as possible, get them to see your way of doing things, and if they will do that, then you'll feel better, and you'll get a lot of relief. And, and, and it will seem like, oh, I've just got to tell them not to do this and not to do that, I'll do it differently. And for myself, if you've got really heavy emotions, what happens is, that's your drug your drug is actually telling them what to do and getting them to do it your way. Yeah, and, and, then, and then your ego tells you, if they'd only listen to me, then life's going to be easy. You know, because it all, I have so much relief because they've now followed my instructions on how to do And all this negativity and this, this, these feelings I've got around it, once it's sorted my way, then I'm going to be happy. It's on a sim similar line to that. So my thing is, uh, and it's a general thing that even I do, is like, I'll try not to interfere with the world, if possible, unless I've transcended it first, and I'm in a position of neutrality, or, or I've transcended it. Sometimes you have to. Sometimes there's urgent issues and you have to, but generally, if I don't have to, I won't. Because I see the greater value in transcending, uh, transcending issues. And I know um, if I'm especially fixated on one person behaving the way I want, and they've caused me a lot of grief, uh, and I've got that much charged emotion around that person, I'll usually try and transcend my emotions and my idea that if they would listen to my advice. Um, and I, and I and intuitively know that if I speak to them when I've got so much charged emotions, and I've had a history of wanting them to follow my instructions, I know for me that's like a drug hit and will take me back into my ego uh, significantly. So all the spiritual work, it's like I've, I've prayed for them for the last month, and now I get on the phone and tell them, like, you've done everything wrong and you need to do it my way. Uh, do you agree? And then you have a huge confrontation with them, and then this confrontation goes on for the next week with like 100 email exchanges going on between the two of you. I know that will wipe out all the spiritual work you've done, because your ego will get enmeshed in the anger and they're not doing it exactly the way you want them to do it. Uh, and that will just take you back. And that's what your ego wants you to do, to go back into the heavy emotions. So I'm not saying that it's not, I mean, I think generally, yes, if it's critical and you have to speak to them, yes, do. But, but generally, if I cannot speak to them and just transcend uh, to do it, because especially if I've got something like depression or something very, very heavy, um, for me, that's more a thing to process and issues in the world that might flare that emotion up or might increase uh, resentments. So I, I can take you back a long way. So if you're, you might be doing the Course in Miracles for a long time, processing your feelings and starting to feel a bit better and suddenly get some relief and then you suddenly have a, a dialogue with this person who who you want to behave the way you want them, 
and then they don't behave the way you want them and then they say this this and this which triggers you even more and then you have a huge exchange and a huge disagreement with them that can now take you all the way back because you're not yet in a tr in a very good spiritual place around what they represent um, sometimes it's a person sometimes it can be a situation um, like uh, a, a person might be special it might be a situation it could be a tree or it could be a house or whatever it is but then some some things become or it could be money some things become so so charged that your ego relates to them like if only this happened my way and I, and I need to just intervene so it does happen my way but then you get more and more triggered into a morass of problems I've, what I found is if I'm if something is very very special like a tree or a house or a person and I need that house to be the way I want it to be I want that tree to be the way I want it to be or I want that person just to agree with me uh, and and then I'll be happy when I've got a lot of charge around it I know that um, when I do interfere because I'm going in with an, with an, a low vibration so when I go into a situation trying to elicit change to be the way I want it to be with a low vibration, that low vibration will probably bring more problems with it. Because, you know, if I'm going in with fear, resentment or worry or needing to control a situation, usually the universe mystically gives me more problems to handle. It's because I'm going in with such a low vibration. These are just generalities. If I transcend more and I go in with much more of a peaceful, serene, transcended thing where I prayed and the hooks aren't so big, then I'm coming in with this, this sort of mystical vibration. Then things tend to get sorted out much more miraculously and more effortlessly than when I go in with that negative vibration, going in there with a the negative charge. So that's just my experience. So I usually do. I mean, that's not to negate that sometimes you have to. You know, there's no option, and then you have to, but then you do the best you can. Um, also, uh, on a slightly different side note, if you're like bored to death of cancelling, I cancel my belief in my great auntie stuffing me with cakes every time I see her. You can, of course, mix it around and change it. You know, like I place my auntie into God's infinite light and love, <coughs> pray for miracles and transcendence, I pray for a miracle to see my auntie differently. Uh, you know, or uh, I, I pray for a miracle to see my waistline differently if it's you having too many donuts every time you see your auntie. So um, feel the feelings, uh, read, you know, even reading, I mean, uh, Hawkins is my favourite teacher, just reading some something from Hawkins and seeing if there's something you can apply as a lesson to contemplate it through on a, on a chapter on fear or desire or whatever. And it might align goes, I'll sometimes you know, listen to Hawkins and, and it'll something, something will, like an illumination will happen. I go, okay, so if I just use that illumination and try and like blast my, whatever my ego is going on with that illumination, it can be like a Course in Miracles lesson and I can hammer it down and go, or, or listen, if you've got uh, Hawkins on letting go or you might hear something or some of his other audible books, you might hear something and then you can use it. Like if you feel an illumination happen, you can use that as a lesson to try and like get as much value out of that uh, piece of light chinking into uh, the darkness of, of your ego's resentments or, or fear or depression around it. Also realize, I don't want to be Pollyanna around it, but you know, I, it's the way I like to do it possible. Sometimes when you transcend something, either the problem disappears or a miracle happens. And so I tend to use that, but it doesn't mean that you can't, you don't have to sometimes, you know, uh, challenge situations. So those are the things I would do in a specific context. Um, you know, take the hooks out and if it's something I've got a particular family member, I would only interfere if I have to and it's critical and take as much time. And if I don't have to interfere and if I can let the whole situation go and make it meaningless, I would prefer to do that because I just have too many overwhelming feelings with this person. When you're in a good place, when you've transcended the person and there's nothing they can do or say, then you can speak to them and tell them what to do as much as you like, because it's not going to affect your peace. But uh, if, if, you know, every time they, they speak to you, you're like, you've got a hundred resentments and the grievances and they've given you even more work to do, it just shows, you know, they you know, can have a counterproductive, energetically speaking. Uh, trying to tell that person over and over again it can create more problems than 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 peace.